It's a, it's a wonderful group. It's a very interesting set of questions that we're debating here. We're actually looking at what does theory tell us in terms of structural change, industrialization, employment market, and whether that really holds when we're talking about the digital economy. I think that as development economists, you know, one tends to approach the question really sort of in a synthetic way sometimes in the sense of here are new digital technologies and how are we going to use that to increase sanitation, to improve healthcare, to, you know, uh, have better access to water or better access to energy and these are to contribute to the sustainable development goals and these are really interesting questions and these are questions where new digital technologies can be of great use. The World Bank, uh, a lot of the other UN agencies are now trying to employ a lot of these new digital technologies like cloud architectures or block blockchain or uh, sort of big data and AI to solve some of these questions. But I think the real challenge for governance to make it really something um, as a tool for development in countries is really to start looking at the other side of digital technologies, which is that these technologies are there and you need to create markets for these technologies. You need to allow local firms and enterprises to grow and to access capital, to take risk and to engage in different kinds of learning and compete in the digital economy. And that kind yeah. of, of, of governance challenge is, um, is, is very big because it's not just about skills creation and it's not just about having a policy on artificial intelligence or just protecting data. It's really about coordinating all of this. It's about coordinating um, regulations on different kinds of new digital technologies with really what we previously perceived as industrial policy, but rethinking how this industrial policy should look in the digital economy and also give space and connecting that to, you know, enterprise level realities in developing countries, which is something we really need to start thinking about. This is a very important question, I think, because if you see uh, what's going on in developed countries today, which are at the forefront of sort of like um, applying digital technologies and anticipating social problems that emerge from it and, and technical and technological problems, then what you see is that what countries need is something like a comprehensive digital strategy. They need actually an elaboration of digital rights. They need actually protection of consumers, which goes beyond sort of like our old age understanding of how consumers need to be protected. And in this sort of challenge, you can see Europe trying to really come out as sort of a leader in terms of governance, because what you see in Europe recently now with the combination of digital regulation and competition, you know, it's a very strong move. It's basically saying that data and data markets are very crucial for growth in all sectors. And what we need to do is really combine this and look at how data is changing, transforming agriculture, services and manufacturing and how it impacts on competition in all these markets and how that uh, impacts consumer rights, right? And I think that that's a very, very, very interesting uh, model for, you know, overall um, governance of digital technologies. Um, there are other countries, like for instance, Canada has now tried to come up with the first sort of like digital comprehensive digital strategy, which once again takes actually the technology governance part of it and the innovation part of it and then links it to issues like uh, social welfare, you know, data protection, personal interest, privacy, and, you know, overall sustainable development. And I think um, a very important part of these governance structures or what is going to be very challenging for governance in the future is striking the right balance between access to data, because it's a very important aspect of innovation, and protection of privacy. You know, so, and this tug of war has to be resolved and has to be resolved in a very careful way, in a way that calibrates actually individual freedom with freedom of enterprises to create knowledge. If you see actually macro level data, what we saw presented in this workshop for the last one and a half days, you get a very bleak picture. You get the picture that firms in developing countries are not able to compete as well as they should be competing. Uh, but I do a lot of micro level work with firms in different countries in Asia and Africa. And one of the things that we find is that 
Um, the kind of data sets that we have to capture manufacturing value added or imports and exports at the macro level, which is very important actually for rigorous economic understanding of the topic, it doesn't really capture what's really going on at the firm level. One of the reasons for that is that digital technologies are really changing and blurring actually the boundaries between sectors like agriculture, manufacturing and services. So when we really measure manufacturing, we tend to leave out a lot of the stuff. The other thing is also that um, um, that you know um, there are two different kinds of value um, exercises going on in the digital economy. So if you take the ex uh, experience of Western countries, you have really sort of value capturing innovation, what you would call, which is basically going on in the global pa platform economy. So if you see product platforms, advertising platforms, they're basically trying to streamline and make clean already existing production, create new markets where markets were not functioning, and they're capturing value from that. Then you have another kind of innovation, which is really value creating innovation. You know, And this kind of innovation you see in sort of smart manufacturing, in AI, uh, in really sort of like Internet of Things and so on. So these two different kinds of innovation, they need very different kinds of skill sets. Then they create different kinds of markets and there are different business models for it. In developing countries, you actually see a lot of firms trying to make use of one or the other and they're emerging in a very sort of significant way. Uh, we work, for instance, with several companies which are actually trying to leverage uh, digital technologies to create smart grids in African countries, or countries that are using actually mobile platforms to, to track uh, anti-counterfeiting of drugs in the African market. And these are quite innovative ways of using digital technologies to tackle local markets or to create new local markets for which there is a demand. And uh, so my answer is yes, local firms are able to compete, uh, but they probably need uh, very strong measures. They need actually really sort of like a strong backup. They need policy support and they need institutional support. How does the trade architecture contribute to this? Well, historically we've had uh, the world, we've got the TRIPS agreement, and um, um, now there were de debates on e-commerce in the WTO, which actually unfortunately did not take off. I, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Uh, they did not take off in the Buenos Aires uh, ministerial conference. And the reason for that is that countries don't agree on whether to govern e-commerce in this way and whether WTO is the right forum to govern e-commerce. And I think moving ahead, a lot of regional trade agreements will play a key role in how firms in developing countries are able to leverage gains from the digital economy. In the African context, you have the Continental Free Trade Agreement, which is creating a free trade area in Africa. And one needs to see how these regional cooperation agreements will actually help countries to, to um, you know, probably uh, pool regional demand, you know, to help grow economies of scale in the digital economy. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, so I have this project, it's called Development in the Digital Economy, which uh, um, I'm working on for the last two years. And as part of this project, um, basically one of the aims of this project is to look at um, what happens to, to, uh, to countries as they enter the digital economy at different stages of development. Uh, what is the impact of these new technologies on industrialization in these different countries and whether there are best practices that can be shared. So um, yeah, definitely. I think that there are a lot of synergies the, of work between you and your merit, wider, and what uh, I've been doing. So we'll definitely we'll definitely look forward to 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 sharing those interests and trying to structure work together.